the podcast Nowhere Near Hollywood. It's Afternoon Coffee with Mike and Tim. Hey, that was good. Uh, What I was thinking was maybe... Welcome to the Afternoon Coffee Podcast with Mike and Tim. (laughs) Nice try, boys. But this is how it should sound. This is the Afternoon Coffee Podcast with Mike and Tim. All right, thank you, Heather. And welcome to part three of our interview with Wendy Smith. Uh, she's an author. She's a Paralympic basketball player. Uh, she's got a resume a mile long. So we won't go back into that, but we will get right back into part three of our interview with Wendy Smith. That's interesting. Yeah, it has got the hope has got so many sides to it, hasn't it? It does. For me, the hope is I suppose I have massive hope for the future that I will run again. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yes. So having that hope is probably what drives me to exercise every day and do all the little movements that I do and keep up with my physiotherapy and make sure I eat right and keep my mind in the right space. And, you know, I I visualize every day. I always imagine when I'm walking the dog that I'm walking without my sticks and, you know, running. And so it is that hope. Yeah. Hope and faith. They go hand in hand, don't they, really? As far as you've come, I say I think you're going to run again. I can I can yeah. see it. I do I believe it. Yeah. I always say I will run again, or I will die trying. It'll be <laughs> <laughs> one or the other. One or the other. You, know, you were talking about stress at one point and how we can kind of stress ourselves out. Now there's a stress hormone cortisol, and and I uh, saw something about it. you had touched on this uh, before, and it's something that's always interested me. I know how cortisol affects the body. How you know what what's your take on cortisol, and how do we keep it at bay? And what is cortisol? It, so anyway. cortisol is just one of the one of the many chemicals we run when we're dropping <clears throat> into negative stress states, yeah. and stress can be anything. If you think about it. Years ago, you know, stress used to be running away from a wild animal, but now stress can be the fact that someone's ringing you on your phone and you don't want to answer it. So we have so much stress around us at all times, and it means the majority of people are probably living in an anxious stress state just through lifestyle. Through That's why we were saying earlier, having time out for yourself, chilling, relaxing, getting away from yes. stuff, lowering all these chemical levels and tilting them back to the oxytocins and the DHEAs. And, but um, uh, cortisol in particular – it's I look at it like poison to the body. It can have it can have the good it can have a good part to it. Normally though, it's not. If you're running on cortisol, you're basically it's a pro it's pro cancer, pro leukemia, pro high blood pressure. It's basically a pro killer chemical that you're running on the inside. So if you want to get yourself out of it, the quickest way to do this is just 7 Eleven breathing. So you know when someone sighs <sighs> that that's our yeah. natural reset for our body. Now, if you get into a habit of doing but seven, you breathe in for seven and out for the count of 11, you only need to do that three times and you've reset your, your parasympathetic nervous system. So it kicks back in wow. and you, you go from fight and flight back into just normal, normal sort of stasis. And as soon as you drop yourself into that space, you flip your chemicals. So as soon as you you do three 7-Eleven breaths, it basically puts you back into a space of control and your chemicals will go the other way. So you start generating the good, the feel-good chemicals in your body that heal you, basically. Yeah. So that's the quickest, the quickest way. If anybody out there is stressed out, your body has a natural reset and it's just breathing. The longer you breathe, so if you breathe out longer than what you breathe in, 7-Eleven or do five nines, you know, but just breathe out longer than you breathe in. It gives a signal to your brain that everything is okay. And so it will reset your stress levels. So that's that's why my wife breathes like that. Have you have you been speaking to my wife? <laughs> that's tremendous. <laughs> she but it is, you, you know, you know it yourself, guys. You, oh, that big sigh that people do. And oh, you yeah. Just, yeah. And you've done it. But if you actually just do it as a 7-Eleven breath and do three of them, you can do as many as you want. But the more you sit in that space, you just reset your body. It's cortisol. It lowers your brain function. So if you're trying to be productive and you're stressed out, you're actually going to be less productive because of the cortisol pumping through your system. So if you want your body to be healthier, if you want your heart to be healthier. I mean, also, you guys must have heard of the Heart Math Institute. Have you heard of the work they do? Have you not? No. Have you not brain coherence? Oh, Elaborate. Right. So the Heart Math Institute, go check them out with heartbreak brain coherence. What they've discovered is your heart has 40,000 neural connectors called sensory neurites. 
So it has its own little brain and it has its own little storage and its own memory. And it actually sends more signals up to the brain than the brain sends down. And what they get you to do, this is amazing. This will pump your body full of 1,200 feel-good chemicals if you do this for three minutes. You breathe as if you're breathing from your heart. So put your hands on your heart and breathe really deeply. In and out for five through your heart and then feel gratitude, love, care or compassion for anything. Mm. You do that for three minutes. You literally flood your body with a chemical contact um, content that is pro health on every wow. level. Anti aging, wow. it's amazing. Go check them out. But yeah, if you guys out there who are listening to this as well, all you have to do is so simple: hand on heart, breathe as if the breath is coming from your heart, nice and slow, five in, five out, and then just really feel gratitude, love, care, or compassion. And wow. the more you feel it, the more this thing starts. They've measured all this chemically. They wire people up to like brain scans and stuff and take blood samples while they're doing it. So this is all actually scientifically proven as well. Yeah, I Amazing. think in light of all, all that's going on in our country and your country, more people need to do that. What do you think, Oh, Mike? yeah, the connection of the heart field is amazing. Yeah, go check out heart math. I'll say no more, and then maybe we could come back and discuss heart math. Oh, I would love it's that, yeah. yeah, yeah we, need, we need a follow-up program, yeah, that's for math, sure. The yeah. Heart Math Institute, amazing. The heart is the biggest generator. It's like a magnetic generator. So for those people that want to get stuff in their life as well, think it but feel it. The feeling brings it in. Connect into that universal field that we have that connects everything, you know, that God force. Connect into that space with love and with gratitude from your heart, focusing on your heart, and you'll just find life becomes so much easier. It's a Tremendous. beautiful place to sit. It really is. And, and segue into, into that, I want to go back to where you were talking, Wendy, about hope. And hope is a, a driver that, that gets us from A to B in one place to another. And there's there was, if I could interject one Bible verse in here, and that's Hebrews 11.1. 1, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So that's what faith is. We don't see We always don't see the outcome, but we have to have faith that it's going to work and it's going to happen. What what an inspiration you've given us today. And we appreciate that. Yeah, sit in that heart space. That's all I can say to people, really. When you sit in your heart space, the work I've been doing from there, that's probably been some of the most profound work that I've done of just connecting myself back to everything. Just finding that, you know, we're all connected. We're all connected. Whatever I do to you, I'm doing to myself. You know, so just... If we could live more, if we could all just live more out of our heart with that compassion for our fellow man and just spend our time out of our heads but more back in our hearts, I think we would change this planet a lot quicker. But just Amen. make a change within yourself. If we all just made that choice to make that little change within ourselves on a daily basis, we're going to improve everything around us really quickly. Wow. I wish we could get more people on board with that. I mean, it just seems like everybody's just – a lot of people yeah. are just so angry and just so, you know – yeah, it, nobody really seems to have a lot of uh, deep thought about anything anymore. So yeah, I never meet anger with anger. Maybe in my youth I used to, but I've learned many lessons now, and I understand it different. So now I just meet anger with compassion. I just go, that's okay. Wow. That's good. Remember yeah. the behavior. The behavior is not what's going on. It's the internal state. And there's something that person's not a happy person. And if they're not a happy person, do I want to add to it with anger? No, re- really, I'd like to give them a different gift. Because right. I'm not wanting everybody I love. And, you know, mankind, we're all one. So it means I love everybody because it yeah. comes back to yourself. You know, if I want to help myself out, I'm not going to help myself out by giving myself more anger, am I? So well, you when, know, somebody's, I when somebody's nasty to you, you I, I always have this think, thought inside my head. It's like, well, I can't control what they do. I can only, only control what I do. Exactly. So, you know, and, yeah. and so whatever they do, I just kind of like, OK, you know, and, you know, it, it, I guess it depends on what it is. You know, if they're breaking in my house, it's a different story. But if they're just yeah. being nasty, you know, I mean, OK, whatever, you know. Yeah, I've just, I've just learned that it doesn't get you anywhere. It's not that I always say to people, it's not that I'll never be angry. If you kicked my dog, I'm going to be very angry. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's anger in context. And the majority of the time, you don't need it. You could actually, you could give it compassion instead. And that will solve the problem. The person's only angry because they're doing, you know, maybe they're not feeling heard or something's happening where they're, again, they've got something going on inside. They want to get out and give to someone. So that gift, I say even that is a gift that they're trying to give me, but I'm not going to accept that gift. (laughs) I'd like a different gift. So I'm going to do my best 
to help them change their internal state to give me a different gift. And as long as I don't meet them in the same space that they're at and I meet them down here on my plane, I've always found that people will come down to me. It eventually. brings it down. It sure does. Absolutely. That's it. That's it. You always have a choice. Like you say, you have a choice how you react to someone. No one can make you feel anything. It's the choice that you run on the inside and then decide to use. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I've learned this phrase some time ago when people are angry toward me. And sometimes I haven't always done this always right. But the the, uh, the saying that meekness is not weakness, it's power under control. Just yeah. because you're the one that's meek doesn't mean you're not powerless. You've got a lot of power if you're the one that's meek because you're not releasing that energy energy of anger on someone. You, you've kept it. The other person is just popping off and they're and they're uh, highly upset but you're the one that's calm and really that'll drive somebody crazy that you're not fighting back yeah Yeah. with uh, one of my colleagues he's ex-special forces and works with all the different energy uh martial arts and all the different energies and one thing we take when we go into schools we take pads and gloves in and the reason we say the kids we're gonna do a bit of boxing this morning but what we do is we get them to hit with anger first so we get them to use angry energy to hit things Ah. and then what and then what john does is he changes their energy and he goes now i want you to think of really happy things and i want you to do this and what they suddenly realize is actually when they're hitting out of anger they've got no power but as soon as they change their energy to like happy laughing energy the power that you can put through something is immense and then we turn that into life so we yeah, cheekily go, yeah, we're going to do a bit of boxing. But that actually turns into a really good life lesson for them. That Actually, if you're angry and stressed with anything, you're not going to get a result. As soon as yeah. you chill out and you change your energy, you're going to get a really good result. So yeah. where do you want to be now, guys? So it's a really powerful lesson for them. That's tremendous. We used to have, uh, I used to work at a warehouse uh, at, at a brewery, and we used to have uh, truck drivers that would scale out and, and the weights wouldn't be right. They'd have to come back. And, you know, time is money when you're a truck driver and, and the whole thing. And they'd come back. Sometimes these guys would be livid. They would come back there and just, you know, cussing you like like you you kicked their dog, you know. <laughs> Yeah. You know, there is a, there is a technique that I kind of developed some, so, you know, I didn't do it great at first. You know, you get mad at first, but then it's like, you just could look at him and said, dude, I said, this is not going to, ha- I want to get you out of here as quickly as possible because I know time is money. And once you kind of like get to that point to where you, they under they know that you understand their frustration, yeah. it dials it down almost immediately. And even if you don't understand, you know, I mean, it, it, but if you somehow will convey the the idea that. You got to be frustrated. I get it. So let's, you know, let's see what we can do. And yeah. man, it, it does. It dials it down immediately almost. Yeah, definitely. Just, to, just va- it's validating someone, isn't it? It's yeah, validating yeah. their experience, but not at their level of energy. So yeah, just go, like that. That, hey, how you feel? Let's turn this around and get you out as quick as you can. No one right. wants to be sat in bay for three hours. I get that. I feel yeah. it. You know, and then they're like, oh, someone gets me. We just all want to be understood and valued, don't we, really, when it I comes that, down? That's exactly it. We want to be understood. And sometimes we just have a hard time expressing how we feel. And it's hard to have people understand us. So, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, it, our teenagers it takes too. effort. So. <laughs> teenagers. Yeah, our, our teenagers, yeah, they want to be valued and understood as well, you know. Yeah, they're teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we just give them that leeway, don't we? We just say, oh, I can't do anything. They're teenagers. Just leave them alone yeah. for five years and then they'll be fine. <laughs> That's funny. Tell, tell them to get her own tea. She'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, he's, all... he's got great kids. So uh, uh, mine mine is going to, I think, I, I didn't even tell this to Tim uh, yet, but we uh, – we are possibly going to have the grandchild that uh, that we were oh. we were kind of waiting for. So yeah, yeah, we just heard about that last week when uh, we went out for my birthday dinner. That was kind of my my surprise. So that oh, was, hey. it's kind of nice. So, Congrats, man, Grandpa. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But so I'll have another another uh, a youth that I can maybe mess up like I did my own son. So and there you go. <laughs> you just get another go, don't you? That's the thing. You go. Right, I've yeah. got another. Yeah program now i always say to parents just look at yourself like a software engineer for the baby so (laughs) whatever you want that kid to be experiencing when they get older you're going to put that information in now good luck exactly (laughs) yeah (laughs) the whole garbage in garbage out that yeah yeah yeah. good luck there's not a manual now that i 
<laughs> now that I'm retired and, I, and my stress level is down very low, I think it'll be go a whole lot better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's nice yeah, to have true. granddad as well because they get to do all the things with granddad that they don't get to go at home, do at home, don't they? Exactly. And I'm, I'm sure my son will be like going, Dad, you never did that with me. It's like, well, you know, you weren't, you weren't this nice. So, yeah, I've, I've, I've got all kinds of stuff I'm going to come back at him with. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, it, you, you have been an absolute joy. Uh, yes. I, I, don't, I don't know how we're going to, we're going to break this up into three parts. I think this is, this is fantastic. Um, so anybody wants to buy your books where, uh, is there a website? Is it, I, I know it's on Amazon. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, you can get it on Amazon. It's on. I finally managed to put it on Kindle on Amazon as well. That was a oh, good. A traumatic experience that I finally got through. Um, yes, yeah, so you can get it off of Amazon or you can jump onto my website, wendysmith.me.uk. And like, okay. so if anyone wants to contact me, always happy to, you know, have a chat with people, answer questions and point them in the right direction for whatever they may need. So if you get a chance, go on that website and uh, check out her TED Talk. I mean, it, it's it's only, I think it's what, about six minutes long? It's not not oh, very long, maybe. They're about 12 minutes, aren't they? Oh, those ones? It went by very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's fantastic. I think I think you really, really enjoy uh, the information that she has in there. And, and it's just, it, it's been great talking to you. I appreciate you coming on the program. And we will get back to you as soon as, what was it we were going to uh, uh, oh, come back, back around? Yeah, we'll talk about a bit of heart brain coherence, connecting in, really connecting send, into yourself. Yeah, send us a link if you have that. Uh, oh, that, we'll that, that would be great. Uh, and yeah, we, we'll definitely do this again. I'm, I'm glad you reached out to us. So yeah, yeah well, thank you guys for thank you for having me on today. I was yeah. going to say this morning, but it's this afternoon for me and this morning for you guys. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. A pleasure. Exactly. Really nice to meet you both. Yeah, so. I love your quote on your book. It says, "Attitude is everything. Choose a good one." <laughs> yeah, that's above my door. So my, really? when I go out in the morning, I've got a big yeah. sign just to remind me that attitude is everything. Everything. Those signs everything. actually, they actually help. I've got a few around here the same way. It's like, you know, as I walk, walk by, I'm like on, I need to straighten up, you know, straighten yep. my dad's old phrase, straighten I, up, fly right type thing. Well, so. I've yeah. got one right. I've got one right here that says pain is temporary. Quitting is forever. So, yeah. yeah. Yes, Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I've got them all around my house. I had a friend come around yesterday who's not been in my house before, and he didn't really get around the house. He kept stopping. And I was like, what are you doing now? He's like, you've got more quotes on your wall. You know, <laughs> when you don't even see yeah. them anymore because you've got so many everywhere. Sure. Like, oh, yeah, I forgot they're there on the mirrors and, yeah, on my mugs. Every mug I pick up in the morning has a quote of some description. It's all yeah. that subliminal – I can't even say the word. Subliminal, the program, yeah. That's it, yeah. The programming that happens, isn't it? The stuff that you see in your environment will create outcomes in your life as well. So choose wisely your environment. Yeah, absolutely. Just yeah. keep feeding the positive, and and, uh, and the positive will eventually come back out. So, yeah, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. Right, guys. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. I can't thank you enough, honestly. Well, thank awesome. you. Thank you. And we will be in touch. I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Lovely. Okay. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Guests on the Afternoon Coffee Podcast stay at the Real Rest Inns and Suites, the only two-star hotel in the tri-state area with a don't-ask, don't-tell policy for snakes and other exotic pets. This episode has been made possible by our awesome intro voice, Heather Foster. You can find out more about her at heatherfostervoice.com. All music has been provided and produced by Marble Planet Productions. You can hear more about them on Instagram at Marble Planet Productions. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can either email us at AfternoonCoffeePodcast at gmail.com or tweet us at AfternoonJaffa. 